Doctors prove the palm olive plan brings two out of three women lovelier complexions in 14 days. For the palm olive plan was tested on women with all types of skin. Dry, oily, even skin that was not clear. Yes, regardless of age, type of skin, or previous beauty care, 36 doctors prove the 14-day palm olive plan brings fresher, brighter, younger-looking complexions. So get palm olive soap and start your 14-day palm olive plan now. Ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day. Oh, I make life seem worthwhile. Twelve in your eyes, and the spell of you smile. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, Dink Trout, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing Baby Face. Baby face, you've got the cutest little baby face. There's not another one could take your place. Baby face, my poor heart is jumping. You sure have started something, baby face. I'm up in heaven when I'm in your fond embrace. I didn't need a show, cause I just fell in love. With your pretty baby face I didn't need a show Cause I just fell in love With your pretty baby Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly. Brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in seven out of ten cases... Colgate's instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder, for Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world today. For cleaning teeth, for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. Well, culture has come once again to the town of Weaverville, this time in the form of a touring theatrical stock company now playing at the local theater. And making a personal appearance in the leading role is none other than Evelyn Lovelace, star of stage, screen, and radio, but not lately. The play in which she's appearing is a little number called The Warning, and judging from the conversation she's now having with her manager, the people of Weaverville have taken it. Thirty people, that's all there were in the entire audience last night. I know. Well, you should have done something to stimulate business. Why didn't you have my latest picture showing at the movie house while the play was in town? Uh, Your picture wouldn't have drawn either, Evelyn. People today want talkies. (laughs) 
Well, it's just Jinx Town, that's what it is. I'll be glad when we open in Middletown tomorrow. We may not be opening anywhere tomorrow. What? Our stagehand quit. You promised to make him your leading man, and then all he did was move furniture and sets around. That's why they all quit. Well, so what? We'll get another stagehand. Yeah? Without a nickel to pay him? There's a yokel in every town dumb enough to fall for the line I hand them about becoming a matinee idol. Have I ever failed yet? No. No, we've always had a stagehand. And we always will. Just wait till I turn my sex appeal on the next sucker. You know what will happen. Yeah. You didn't understudy Theta Berra for nothing. <laughs> so off went Evelyn Lovelace in search of a sucker. Was it fate that let her pass the Bon Ton shoe store where our young hero works? Anyway, chalk up this much for feminine intuition. Just one glance through the window and she knew her search was over. Good morning, madam. Could I interest you in a pair of shoes? We have... Stop. I said something dirty? <laughs> no. No, say that again. You mean, could I interest you in a pair of shoes? Yes. That voice, that quality, that resonance, that vibrancy. Where did you ever get a voice like that? Gee, I don't know. It just kind of came with my body. <laughs> Compelling, magnetic. Tell me, have you ever sung? Yeah, a little. Sing for me now. Now? Okay. Oh! Magnificent, superb. <laughs> I've never heard anything so divine. Oh, it just happens to be a catchy tune. <laughs> Don't you understand? Destiny has brought us together. Oh, if you only knew how long I've been looking for someone like you. Yeah? Yes. And then just now, when I heard you say, Madam, could I interest you in a pair of shoes? I knew my search had ended. Your feet have really been killing you, huh? <laughs> No, I'm not talking about my feet. I'm talking about the stage. Huh? Don't you know who I am? I'm Evelyn Lovely. Oh, sure. I didn't recognize you without your makeup. You're the star of that play I saw the other night, huh? Yes. Now do you understand what I want? The theater is calling me. Oh, my gosh. If it's about that piece of gum I stuck under my seat. <laughs> no, it isn't that. I want you to be my new leading man. Your leading man? Me? Of course. Can't you see why? That warm, glowing personality of yours, your divine talent, magnificent artistry, your dazzling good looks, your thrilling physique. That's why. Yeah, you've got your reasons, all right. <laughs> Please, don't. <laughs> don't hesitate. The theater needs new blood, and I can make you the greatest star who ever lived. Gee, I don't know. I've got a girl, and she may not approve of me going on the stage. A girl? What one girl? You'll have thousands of girls at your feet, all begging to become your slave. But I'm not that kind of a fellow. The only slave I want is my wife. <laughs> oh, you can't let this girl stand in your way. We'll tour the country together, live in a trunk. We'll do the greatest plays ever written. Henry Gibson, Bernard Shaw, Anton Chekhov, Shakespeare. William Shakespeare? That's the one, yes. <laughs> Say you will, please. Well, I... Oh, thank you. In the name of American theater goers everywhere, I thank you. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> you will be the greatest actor the world has ever known. I can hear you now reciting your lines from the immortal bard. Tomorrow and tomorrow, you say, creeps in this petty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Gee, I hope I don't have to explain what I say afterwards. <laughs> Come in. Oh, hi, Mildred. Hi, Dennis. I just... Why, you're packing a suitcase. Yeah, I gotta go out of town. Oh? Well, when will you be back? In about five years. <laughs> Five years? What are you talking about? I'm giving myself to the American theater goer. What? Grease paint, girl. It's in my blood. The stage has beckoned, and I've decided to yield to the lure of the headlights. You mean footlights? When I'm on the stage, they'll be shining at me from all directions. <laughs> Dennis, will you please make sense? What's this nonsense about the stage? Nonsense? Huh. Listen to this. Madam, could I interest you in a pair of shoes? <laughs> Just something to you, huh? 
Yes, it makes me think you've gone crazy. Oh, don't fight it, Mildred. You see, I met Evelyn Lovelace today, and she asked me to be her new leading man. Evelyn Lovelace? Yeah. But how could she? You've had no experience. Well, nevertheless, we both feel that a person with my new blood ought to live in a trunk. <laughs> what? We're touring the country together for the next five years, Millie. We both feel that I have something to offer the public. But, Dennis, what about me? Oh, I'll offer it to you later. <laughs> Well, all I'm asking you to do is wait, and five years isn't very long. Dennis, say, if you go away for five years, I'll be married and have a big family when you come back. Well, I suppose I can't stop you from killing time while you're waiting. <laughs> oh, I think you're just vile. And as far as I'm concerned, I never want to see you again. Never. But, Mildred... You I... heard me. Have your darn career. Be the biggest star in the world. I'll never have anything to do with you as long as I live. How do you like that? Boy, women sure are hard to understand. Oh, well, from now on, I don't have to understand them. They'll have to understand me. Gee, I wonder if that's going to be any easier. <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Anderson. Good morning, my boy. <laughs> did I just see Mildred running down the hall, crying her little heart out? I'm afraid you did, sir. She and I have just... <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. What happened? Oh, I was telling her something, and when I got through, she said she'd never say another word to me again as long as I lived. Well, what were you telling her? Uh, maybe I can tell it to my wife. <laughs> You're joking, Mr. Anderson, but this is serious. Well, of course, Dennis, and I apologize. Now, you tell me what it's all about. Well, she broke off our engagement because I'm going to make a million dollars. I see. Uh -huh. And just how do you plan to do that? Well, I've decided to go on the stage and become the greatest matinee idol in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it does beat opening a hot dog stand. Yeah, but it might take a couple of years and Mildred doesn't want to wait for me. Yes, I know. It's an old story, Dennis. Marriage versus a career. Same thing happened with my father's best friend. But wasn't he a little old for Mildred? <laughs> a different girl, Dennis, but the same story. He postponed marriage for a stage career, too. That was back in the 1890s. And when did he finally marry the girl? Something always came along to delay them. First, he had her wait eight years. Then, just as they were about to be married, the Spanish-American War came along. Gosh. In 1906, when they were ready again, there was trouble on the Mexican border. He did another hitch in the Army. Then in 1917, when he had enough money to ask her once more, along came the World War. Gee, and they never got married. No, they never got married. And today, he's 76 and she's 74. Well, tell me when they plan on it again so I can volunteer before I'm drafted. <laughs> I only told you this story, Dennis, to show what can happen when a man chooses a career instead of a wife. Yes, sir. It's a sad story. Yes, it's the saddest I've ever made up. I mean, the saddest I've ever heard. <laughs> now, you think about it, Dennis. It could happen to you. Gee, yeah. Mildred or a career? A career or Mildred? It's not easy to choose. I know. I think I'd better take a walk around the block a few times and think this out, Mr. Anderson. Yes, you do that, my boy. I'll see you later. Okay. Which is more important, the glitter of lights or the glitter of Mildred? Mildred can give me a home. Well, the stage can give me a home. Mildred can give me companionship. Well, so can the stage give me companionship. Mildred can give me babies. Yeah, Mildred goes one up all right. <laughs> Gosh, what a problem. Hey, buddy, watch it. You're crossing against the light. I love Mildred, but this is my big chance for success. Can I afford... Buddy, look out! That car! <laughs> Smoke it knocked him ten feet. Is he all right? Is he all right? I don't know. He's unconscious. Here, give me a hand with him. A stage or Mildred? Mildred or a career? Which? Which? Well, this is the finale coming up, Dennis. It's the finale in more ways than one, Mr. Hammerstein. It's the last song I shall ever sing on the stage. For waiting in the wings for me is my fiance, Mildred Anderson whom I'm engaged and go steady with. Yes, I know. And I'm going to miss you, my boy. 1898's the greatest year my theater's ever had. Because you're the biggest star the world has ever known. Now go out there and kill him. I'll try. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss. 
kiss by wire. Baby, my heart's on fire. Oh, if you refuse me, honey, you'll lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I your own. Hello, hello, hello there. Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. Hello, my right time guy. Send me a kiss by wire. Oh, baby, my heart's on fire. Oh, if you refuse me, honey, you lose me. Then you'll be left alone. Oh, baby, telephone and tell me I your own. That was wonderful. Mildred, my darling, how I've longed for you these past eight years. May I kiss your hand? Why, Dennis, I'm not wearing gloves. Of course, I beg your pardon. <laughs> do you know why I asked you to come down here tonight, Mildred? Yes, I think I do. My handsome is waiting for me at the curb. I know, and I saw just as Arnold sitting inside of it. Then you know all. Mildred, will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? I like you, Mildred. Deed, I do. <laughs> Dennis, how I've been longing for you to ask that question. And my answer is... Good heavens, listen to this. The USS Maine has just been sunk in Havana Harbor. What? Goodbye, Mildred. I'm off to fight the Spaniards. See you in a year, folks. Oh, Dennis, come back. Don't leave me. Well, this is our number, Dennis. Let's give them everything we've got. Yes, the last number we shall ever do together, Herbie. For waiting in the wings tonight is my intended, Mildred Anderson, to whom I have plighted my troth. Yes, and I'm going to miss you, boy. 1912 is the greatest year we've ever known, because you're the greatest star in history. Thank you, Herbert. Well, let's go. Tell me, pretty maiden, are there any more at home like you? There are a few, kind sir, but German girls can't stop or do. Then tell me, pretty maiden, what these very simple girlies do? Kind sir, their manners are perfection and the opposite of mine. If I love you, For I must love someone. If I love me, yes, I must love someone really, and it might as well be. Wonderful. Mildred, my darling, how I've longed for you these past 14 years. <laughs> have you been well? Well, I did have a touch of pneumonia. When? 1903. <laughs> yes, that was a beastly winter. Do you know why I asked you to come down here tonight, Mildred? Yes, I think I do. My Stanley steamer is outside at the curb. <laughs> I know, and I saw Justice Arnold inside, covered with steam. <laughs> then you know all. Will you be my wife, Mildred? I like you. Scout's honor. Oh, Dennis, how I've been longing to hear you ask that question. And my answer is... Good heavens, can this be true? The SS Titanic has been sunk in the North Atlantic. What? Goodbye, Mildred. I'm off to fish the survivors from the icy waters. Wait for me, my darling. Oh, Dennis, come back. Don't leave me. Hate to lose you, Dennis. The Follies of 1917 is the greatest I've ever produced because you're the greatest star the jazz age has ever known. And I hate to leave, Mr. Zigfield, but waiting in the wings for me is the girl of my dreams, Mildred Anderson, whom I love with a passion nonetheless powerful because of its purity. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, my boy. I shall announce your final number on the stage myself. Ladies and gentlemen... We present to you now that great star, the one and only high-handed tragedian of jazz, Dennis 
Is everybody happy? Hey! Oh, when my baby, when my baby smiles at me, ha-ha, my thoughts go roaming, roaming to paradise, yeah. And when my baby, gee, when my little baby smiles at me, folks, whoa, what a wonderful life that comes to her eyes. Listen, buddy, give him the smile that just brings love. Give it up. Oh, cut it out, will you? That's it. That's the smile that brings real harmony. I sigh and I cry. Oh, it's just a bit of heaven, heaven, when my baby, when my baby smiles at me, play on When my baby, when my little baby smiles at me, ah, oh, gee, ah, oh, stop it, I say. And when my baby, when my baby smiles at me, ah, oh, I can't stand it. Now, honey, cut it out, will you? Come on, come on, give him the smile that just brings love. Come on, give it to him. Gee, that's it, that's it. That's the smile that brings real harmony. Come on, baby. I sigh and I cry. Oh, it's just a bit of heaven, heaven. When my baby, when my baby smiles at me. Is everybody happy? Oh, Dennis, that was wonderful. Mildred, my darling, oh, how I've longed for you these past five years. How is your dear family? They're all dead. Oh, (laughs) what wretched luck. Do you know why I asked you to come down here tonight, Mildred? Yes, I think I do. My Rolls Royce is parked right outside the stage door. I know, and I saw Justice Arnold sitting inside of it. Then you know all. Mildred, will you marry me? I'm beginning to have quite a warm regard for you. (laughs) Oh, Dennis, how I've been longing for you to ask that question. And my answer is... Good heavens, have you seen this? The SS Lusitania has been sunk by a submarine. What? Goodbye, Mildred. I'm off to fight the Hun. I'll be back... When it's over, over there! Oh, Dennis, come back! Don't leave me! (laughs) Well, our last number, Dennis. 1941 sure has been a great year. Yes, I'll miss you, Herbie. But waiting in the wings for me is the old lady I care deeply for. I know, but I just want to tell you how wonderful it's been to have worked with you all these years as the ink spots. It has been grand, hasn't it? Well, let's give this last number everything we've got. You bet. I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. I don't want to set the world on. I love you too much. I just want to start a red hot flame. Down in your big old fat heart. (laughs) You see... Way down inside of me... Darling, I have only one desire. And that one desire is you, poopsie gal. (laughs) And I know nobody else ain't gonna do... No time, no how. I <laughs> lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. I just want to be the one you love. And with your admission, 
that you feel the same. I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. Believe me, I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. Oh, Dennis, you were wonderful. Mildred, my darling. Oh, how I've longed for you these past 24 years. Yes, it seemed like almost a quarter of a century. Do you know why I asked you to come down here tonight, Mildred? Yes, I think I do. My convertible is right across the street. I know, but I didn't see Justice Arnold in it. Yeah, I didn't want to throw away another $2. Oh. Will you marry me, Mildred? I'm 76. Middle age will soon be upon me. Dennis, how I've been longing for you to ask that question. And my answer is... Good heavens, have you heard the radio? Pearl Harbor. My gosh, that's been bombed? Yes, bombed. Oh. Goodbye, Mildred. I'm off to fight the jack. <laughs> oh, Dennis, come back. Don't leave me. Don't you see, Dennis? Your whole life has slipped away from you. Wake up before it's too late, Dennis. You've got to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up, Dennis. Wake up. Huh? No, no, no. Mildred. Where am I? Oh, you were hit by a car right in front of the house. Are you all right? Are you all right? I... I... I, I think so. Gee, I had the wildest Listen, bomb. What's happened here? Uh, oh, Miss Lovelace. Yes, I came over to see if you were ready to leave with me. Me? Are you crazy? I just had four boats shot out from under me on account of you. <laughs> I'm staying right here. What? Yes, you can have the stage. I don't want it. I know what'll happen if I go with you. I'll be so old when I get married, my first kid will be my grandchild. <laughs> Come on, Mildred. Let's go home. Dennis Day will be back in just one minute to say good night. But first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, hair that gleams and glistens. From a luster cream shampoo. Yes, for soft, glamorous dream girl hair, try luster cream shampoo. Now in convenient tubes or jars, whichever you prefer. Luster cream shampoo leaves hair with new three-way loveliness. Fragrantly clean, glistening with sheen, soft, easy to manage. Not a soap, not a liquid, but an utterly new, rich lathering cream shampoo. A blend of secret ingredients plus lanolin. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, tubes or jars, 49 and 25 cents. Be a dream girl. A lovely luster cream girl. Dream girl, dream girl. Beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to... A luster cream shampoo. This is Dennis Day, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us tonight. And listen again next week, won't you? Good night, everybody. Next week, tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. This is Vern Smith speaking. Good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.